As you get older, you're more likely to develop a thyroid nodule, where they estimate that it's up to 60 to 70 percent of patients over 60 to 70 might have a thyroid nodule or cyst if you look hard enough. The risk of cancer varies, again, based upon other factors. So the patient's age, their gender, family history is a very important risk factor. So a patient who has a first degree relative with thyroid cancer is two to three times more likely than the general population to have thyroid cancer themselves. And radiation exposure is a very interesting environmental factor. And we don't mean radiation like dental x-rays, we mean ionizing beam radiation. So it's very common in the 50s and 60s up into the 70s for external beam radiation to be used for a variety of non-malignant conditions. I don't know if any of you remember, but there was a period when patients would get radiation therapy for such seemingly benign things as tonsil enlargement, thymus enlargement, ringworm, acne, and it worked pretty well, but unbeknownst to the clinicians at the time, a decade or two later, those patients are at high risk for developing thyroid cancer. And the University of Chicago was a hotbed for radiation research for <laughs> reasons that we all understand due to its involvement with uh, Enrico Fermi and the Manhattan Project. And so they had a lot of radiation isotopes and radiation therapy that was developed at the University of Chicago. But some astute clinicians in the 1970s began to notice an, a bump, an uptick in the number of patients with thyroid cancer. And they were able to trace epidemiologically that all these patients had received therapeutic re radiation a decade or two before. And this was called, at the time, the Chicago Endemic. And it was something that reached um, a lot of uh, news agencies. A lot of people started to get very um, much more aware of the dangers of therapeutic radiation. And it, this link between thyroid cancer and radiation, thankfully now we limit radiation therapy for, to, to malignant conditions for the most part. But unfortunately, there have been some other nuclear disasters that have led to an uptick in thyroid cancer. For example, after the Chernobyl disaster in 1986, the incidence of thyroid cancer in children in Eastern Europe, specifically the, the place that was most um, closely studied was Belarus, the incidence of thyroid cancer skyrocketed. And all those patients, when you take out those kids, when you take out their thyroid and you test their tumors, they, you find a very, very specific genetic mutation that has been turned on by the radiation. And it was consistent throughout all those uh, Belarus, uh, Belarusian kids who, had, uh, thyroid, who were diagnosed with thyroid cancer in the decade or two following the Chernobyl disaster. I anticipate we're going to see a very similar thing in the aftermath of the 2011 Fukushima nuclear disaster in Jap Japan. Overall, the risk of thyroid cancer within a thyroid nodule is probably somewhere between 7 to 15 percent. We usually quote 5 to 10 percent in that ballpark. Again, depends on other factors. And if you're getting evaluated for a thyroid nodule, well, of course, as with anything, you do a complete history and physical examination, focusing on whether or not the patient can feel it, whether it's been there for a while. You also ask them about elements such as the family history and any history of radiation exposure. And then when you do your physical examination, if you can feel it, you want to see if the thing moves, if it's soft or firm or hard. And then you can also at the same time feel for any lymph nodes in the area because patients with thyroid cancer not uncommonly will have lymph node metastases in the general vicinity along that jugular chain which I showed you on the anatomic drawing. You can get a blood test to look for your thyroid function. It's unusual for patients with thyroid nodules to have any kind of thyroid uh, function abnormality, although occasionally you'll find what's called a toxic nodule, which is a hyper-functioning, autonomously, autonomously functioning thyroid nodule. But a TSH level is generally sufficient in your screening or looking for any kind of thyroid function abnormalities. Ultrasound is really our first line radiologic study if we're going to look and investigate a thyroid nodule. And there are a series of criteria now based upon how big the nodule is, its appearance under ultrasound, other clinical factors, which will determine when we will order a fine needle aspiration biopsy of a thyroid nodule.